International AIDS Day, uh, Red Ribbon, International AIDS Day uh, is tomorrow, of course, a lot of MPs tomorrow. Uh, why did you want to make that speech? Well, there were two main reasons. One is that I was uh, in my constituency uh, nominating people for awards for their bravery of speaking out about their status. And there seemed to me uh, a, a duty as a politician, if I'm going to be recognising and congratulating others for doing something, to put your money where your mouth is. Um, and I am surely paid as a politician to link the personal with political messages. Do you think that, that there is still a taboo about telling people you're HIV positive? I mean, was it, was it difficult for you? Yes, it, it, it is difficult. Some of that is internalised stigma, you know, kind of the, the, the fear that you have yourself. But some of it is just that there is still a lack of knowledge around how the treatment means that you are um, you're undetectable and you can't transmit the disease. And even sometimes the most well-meaning people will kind of, uh, when I was writing the speech, and people looking over it saying, well, hang on a second, you can't say that. That's not true, is it? And I say, well, yes, the NHS says it's true. You can't pass it on. The NHS says that this is the best way to stop the disease, is to treat people early. So it's not that people are hostile stigma, but you have that kind of friendly stigma that people just don't know. And the good news, as you pointed out, is that for people like you, mm -hmm. people living in this country with the NHS, yes. people in the Western world, it is now a containable disease. It's not, it's not a death sentence. I mean, I have to be hugely grateful for the NHS and our health service to be able to rely on that and so that I can then keep contributing to society in, in whatever way. We have gone in the last few years, though, globally, uh, made real achievements. 22 million people around the world are now on treatment. We need another 15 million to go. But if we meet that gap, we will be really serious to start that then talking around abolishing HIV entirely. We managed to do it with uh, smallpox. We're almost managing to do it with polio. I honestly think that the next threshold is abolishing this disease that only 30 years ago we thought was a, a death sentence and there was well, no it hope. was, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, is, is that where the focus needs to be now, uh, away from the first world, if I can put it that, or is there still work that needs to be done by the NHS in this country? Well, there's still some work that needs to be done with NHS England. We're in a rather strange situation at the moment that um, in Wales and in Scotland, we have this pill that you can take once a day that stops you getting HIV, more effective than a condom. A condom with normal use, you know, not because people mm. don't use it perfectly, has, 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 has a 70% kind of rate of success. The, the pill, we're talking about almost a 100% rate of success. So in Scotland, available, in Wales, available. The Northern Ireland Secretary here in Westminster, who of course is in charge of Northern Ireland, has made it freely available in Northern Ireland with no caps. But her counterpart across the cabinet table in the Health Secretary has not permitted it to be freely available without caps here in England. Okay, I mean, there are obviously cost implications. It's quite expensive. Well, yeah. it, 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 it's not hugely expensive. The generic is coming out at the end of the year. We're talking about, um, you know, kind of £10 um, a, 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 a pop in terms of kind of a monthly, a monthly uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah. container when the generics come out. And the NHS itself says over, um, if PrEP was introduced, over the lifetime of the next generation of people coming forward, it would save one billion for the NHS. So it's, it is some initial uh, inputs, but there's a long-term saving. The, the problem is that um, the government has been slightly uh, too cautious, let's put it like that, to be mm. kind, and they have introduced this trial to try and see what the behavioural changes will be. But the trial is now full, and we know that there are people trying to get this medication in London who are unable to get it and now are getting uh, HIV. And that, to me, is unforgivable. When we have the tools in our hands to protect people in Britain, and we're able to protect them in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, but for some reason England's citizens are not treated in the same manner. And that is quite easy for the minister to reverse. But the big push is needed overseas, uh, where in, in Africa, Latin America, places like exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, I was in Africa because I sit on the International Development Committee um, a week and a half ago now, and there we see stigma and prejudice still rife. I was in a school where the children were being taught that you could get HIV from sharing towels, and so there's still a lot more that we need to re-educate. And what is it there? The 
question of getting the same medicines. It's about the medicines, but it's also about the information. Because there's, there's, you can provide all the medicine, but if you're not providing the knowledge of how to properly use it, then you're, you're, you're on a hiding to nothing. So some of that is about medicines, making sure that we pool global patents and so that we can actually leverage more out for the same amount of money.